time that you planned how you exit your house as you head to your day's chores. But now it's back to studio as we want to focus on the news review. We want to introduce the panel here. Well, my name is Sam Gitoko. And, and my you? name is Inzi Kibiku. Right. To introduce the panel here, we have uh, former Deputy Speaker Farah Malim. Karibu sana to the Thank show. You. Thank you. We have uh, Senator Mithika Linturi from Meru County. Karibu sana to the show. Asante sana. And Dr. Chris Thank Omalua you. from Community Constituency, Transoya County. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you very much. And we're still expecting Tim Wanyonyi, the member, the member of Parliament for Westlands. Westlands in Nairobi County. We will be sure to bring him on board as soon as he joins us. But first, we take a look at what's happening uh, on the front page of the two dailies. I want to begin with the Daily Nation revealed secrets of MPs Somalia trip. Tough questions for 11 politicians who secretly uh, left Nairobi on Saturday for Mogadishu where they were hosted and dined by uh, President Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo in what uh, could herald a fresh diplomatic tiff between Kenya and its neighbor. We'll shortly be looking at some of the clips of uh, the voices of the members of parliament as they return to the country as well as uh, what an official from the Foreign Affairs Department is saying. But that story is also focused on on page 6 of the Daily Nation where you will see that uh, the, the Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, Justin Muturi, is saying that he was not involved, he was not informed of the travel, and uh, he actually says on page 6 that, um, I was only told about it yesterday, that is Sunday, but they did not seek permission or even inform me as required. So we do not know whether that is in, in, in keeping with the protocol. Do you have the clips of the members of Parliament? We don't have them yet, but uh, uh, let's start with you, former Deputy Speaker Farah Malim. You, you've been uh, following the story and uh, how the leaders had to be questioned for, uh, for a short while at the airport. And yeah. Would you know what the agenda was uh, for their mission to Mogadishu? Well, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of hype and um, sensationalization of um, too much ado about Mm -hmm. Something that's very basic. Basic. They met the president of Somalia. Just, just relax. I'm, I'm explaining it. So you wait until I finish my explanation. Right, go ahead. Yes. They, there's nothing wrong with anybody meeting any president. Mm -hmm. Every politician here meets everybody else, everywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. There's nobody who seeks uh, permission from somebody because he's going to meet another president. I've met more than 10 presidents myself. Mm -hmm. I don't have to seek anybody's permission. These are the old communist socialist kind of attitude when for you to do something, when the, the parliament used to be, before parliament got its independence, it used to come under the office of the president, mm -hmm. which in itself was unconstitutional because the constitution is clear, mm -hmm. the separation of power. Mm -hmm. You have to have the three arms, which are independent of one another, but of course interdependent. So there is nothing wrong with anybody. There's a constitutional right, you can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. The fact that they were a big number, they went in there is also not clandestine. When you have 11 members of parliament to going together and taking a flight together, mm -hmm. that's not clandestine. They're not hiding anything. They're mm -hmm. telling you, come and see what you're going to do. Uh, what I also know is that uh, Uhuru in the meeting they had last time mm -hmm. told them, go back and come up with a plan on how we can get rid of this insecurity in the region, mm -hmm. which is quite an unusual thing. You, usual in the sense that you can come up with a plan and take it to the president for the government to implement. Mm -hmm. But to expect the uh, leaders and local people to go and uh, secure security mm -hmm. is tantamount to uh, a crime in CBD and then you say the businessmen in here must secure the, the security of this place. Mm -hmm. it is, it's a bit of a crap. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You see the principle, the principle, the first cardinal sanctified role of a government mm -hmm is to protect the life and the property of his own citizens. Right. So uh, to the extent which uh, information, we need certain intelligence information which we cannot possibly get ourselves, mm -hmm. that information is available all the time. Okay. But the reality of the matter is, you tell the Kenya police, there are bandits there. Mm -hmm. They will not go and face them. Nobody wants to die. They'll go in the opposite direction. So how do you answer to um, the fact that... Uh... But the fact that these people have gone one is not clandestine because they went 11 of them. It's, it's a big open thing. Mm -hmm. Two, the director of intelligence is aware of it and the inspector general aware of it. They just did not go like that. They discussed. They sat together and they discussed. The issue is where did all this sensationalization come from? Two things. Minister of Foreign Affairs probably believes that it has to have the, the, the final say on these things. Mm -hmm. Because one of those members who came there was from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. But the DCI didn't see any, any of that stuff that was there running around the media and everybody else. Okay. In any case, if you have to do such things, would you want to go and inform the media and tell them to come and wait here? <laughs> These guys have gone without our permission and all that kind of stuff. It shows that there are certain very 
powerful lapses in the government. We have a problem All right. with the government. We don't have a functioning government. We have a government where the left hand does not know what the right hand does. Oh, no, so but my, uh, Malim, let's listen to the leaders as they spoke after getting back <coughs> to the country and what they said uh, right now. The knowledge of His Excellency Uhuru Mugia Kenyatta, who has challenged the leadership to be forthright in their fight against Al Shabaab. We thought it wise to engage our neighboring country, Somalia, so that we can be able to, to attend to the issues of insecurity which is affecting our common boundary. And I want to make it extremely clear that we met with only one person, and that is the president of the federal government of Somalia, in person, because we thought we will upscale this issue to the highest level. Why we did that is because Al Shabaab's foundation and home is in Somalia. They are the ones who have made us suffer this magnitude. We also delivered the message that he needs to de-escalate the issue of having rhetoric letters accusing Kenya left, center, and right, and told him in person that we plead with you, please stop those things. Engagements with foreign nations must go through the Minister of Foreign Affairs. It is from that point, that Office of Foreign Affairs, that the agenda is set and the, the protocols are agreed upon. In this case, it didn't happen. We are not under MFA, but issues of parliamentary is a parliamentary issue. We have parliamentary privileges, we'll sort it out. But not, not it's a process. But us going or whatever, we weren't there in our own capacity. Uh, we don't report to MFA. Thank you. All right, so, so gentlemen, uh, let me focus on uh, Senator Linturi and uh, Dr. Wamalo here. So these are state officers, and uh, they're arguing there that they didn't go to Somalia in their capacities as members of parliament. You know who they are. Uh, in the spirit of, yes, separation of powers, but also the unity of a government, even as you take a mission to a different country, what is supposed to happen? He says that they do not have to inform the Minister of Foreign Affairs. What exactly is supposed to happen? Senator. Yeah. I, to some extent, and uh, I may um, be able to agree with them and uh, Mr. Farah, and depending on the agenda of any mission or meeting that um, you intend uh, to attend outside this country. The mm. uh, reason is that, uh, you know, we all have um, uh, collective uh, responsibilities as lenders, and we also have individual uh, uh, responsibilities and depends on how you account for whatever you do at any one particular time, in my view, is very critical and very important. And I think, <coughs> as uh, that member of parliament has seen, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> a parliament has its own procedures on how you must do things. If you, the, uh, the, the standing orders, I think, provide, or the rules of parliament provide, that when you are getting out of Kenya, you don't have to tell the office of the president, you only need to inform the speaker of your relevant house that mm -hmm. you are traveling out. I, I have done that a number of times, and I have never, never indicated why I'm going out. But it's only courteous. Is the communication supposed and, to get clearance, or is it just for you? Inf for information? information, it's not to get clearance. Okay. I think uh, my mind, I think no, I'm you're correct. You're very right. Yes. Let me explain that one very well, as a speaker. The standing on that have changed. Yes. No, no, it hasn't changed. You put it very well. <laughs> what, what actually happened is, what actually is, the reason why mm -hmm. the fundamental philosophical underpinning of that one mm -hmm. is that if you miss eight consecutive sessions of the House, mm -hmm. sittings of the House, mm -hmm. then you lose your seat. Right. So in the, in the unlikely event or the likely event that anything can happen, that you might stay beyond that mm -hmm. for two weeks, and eight is only two weeks. Mm. You, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You see, Parliament can be called at the shortest notice. If, if, there's, if, if there's a process in which we, it can be called. So you, it's always important that you notify the speaker and he takes note of the fact that you've notified him through writing. Mm. But that's yeah. only because you cover yourself. In the unlikely event you become sick or there's a coronavirus somewhere else and you can't come back into the mm. country <laughs> or you, you have an, another, what do you call, challenges, then of course your seat will not be declared vacant because the speaker is aware of it. Right. Okay. So that's the philosophy. It does not take away your constitutional right. Mm -hmm. Constitutional right, which is in the Bill of Rights, freedom of movement, both inside 
and I'll say the country. Dr. Chris, what do you make I of this I haven't seen anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, proceed, proceed, <laughs> proceed. Yeah. 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 Sorry, sorry, Lituri. Yeah, I think I just was uh, trying to... Farah has put correctly put yeah. it by trying to explain the, the yes. philosophy uh, behind, I think, that uh, particular uh, provision. And uh, I um, believe that uh, in this country, Kenyans have a lot, a lot of either it is, I was going to say respect and faith mm -hmm. in their leadership and the people that they elect. Because even with the new constitution Honda, mm -hmm. there hasn't been any paradigm shift in, in the thinking, in the way Kenyans think in regards to mandate of their people. That is why you find even when the rules of the executive and parliament are so clear, mm -hmm. even when problems or an, an aspect of uh, development is supposed to squarely fall on the executive, the Wananji will always go to the members of parliament and tell them kindly do A, B, C, and D. So it is in this respect that I think when these people were, probably, I can, I can only be speculative, right. when, and if it is true that the president told them A, do whatever is within your, uh, your power mm -hmm. to ensure that there is peace, right, uh, in the Somalia, between the Kenyan, Somalia, and Bunda, mm -hmm. then I think it was only right for them to see at their personal level and capacity what they can do uh, to ensure that mm -hmm. they are previous peace. Because the aspect of peace cannot be guaranteed by the state. Okay. Okay. We can Chris. only hope, play oh. a part in ensuring that there is peace in this country mm -hmm. and we have each individual responsibilities. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think our standing orders in the parliament are very clear. If a member of parliament you are traveling, it is important that you must notify the speaker. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at this context, these members of parliament travel out. Did they travel out as a caucus? The answer is no. All caucuses in the parliament are recognized and the speaker must have given the approval. But now, listening to what they said, and the one thing we need to understand is the relationship between Somalia and Kenya. Mm -hmm. we, the relationship has not been that very, very good. I just want to take you through the, uh, the, the memory lane. Remember Somalia took Kenya to the National Court of Justice right. on matters of jurisdiction. The boundary is the, the famous Blue Triangle in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen them agitating that the KDF forces which are there, they should be withdrawn. Not only that, we've also had uh, many issues that have been there. Mm -hmm. So the relationship has not been very good. And the issue of also Al-Shabaab, mm -hmm. okay? So already the relationship between Kenya and Uganda, mm -hmm. much, I mean, and uh, Somalia, Somalia, much that Kenya has helped Somalia the way it is. We've seen many Kenyans saying, Asante Apunda, Nimateke. This is a, a neighbor you helped. He has taken you to the court, the ICJ court, and this matter has been going on. And now when it comes to the issues of Al-Shabaab, and one of the critical responsibilities of any government is to ensure the security of its citizens. Right now, as we speak in, northern, in the northern Kenya, TSC is withdrawing the teachers. And I listened to Nancy. Mm -hmm. She said, we can't be posting teachers, and they come back in coffins. So this issue, maybe the president told them, please, you should be able to come together. The, the, the spirit of Nyumbakumi, most of them are Shababs. Maybe the members of parliament know, or they have some intelligence All right. that they can be able. But if it comes to going out of the country, I strongly feel there must be the concurrence of Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. They are the ones in charge of the relationship, the diplomatic relationship between countries. Between the two so countries. it is important, All right. if I told the MPs went there, they should have notified the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And again, as they go, the responsibility of NIS in Kenya, they must follow up and see. Well, I mean, the reason they say their reason was for security purposes. Was that a valid point? And don't you not think that if that's the case, perhaps uh, a CS like Matengi himself should have then gone with them? No, not necessarily, Ma no, 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 not not necessarily Matengi, but once it's uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is aware and uh, they have done the, the bookings, the process of the meeting, it's good enough. Matengi doesn't need to be there. When it comes to security internationally, it's not even Matengi. Matengi is only domestic. But when it's anything going international, it is now under the responsibility of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. All right, D Dr. Chris, I want us to take a look at a tweet that was released yesterday by Bilo Keru. He's a, Mumba, uh, a former senator of Mandera County, if you can have that. Uh, here he says that uh, let those paranoid about Northeastern people and their leaders know that we are not guests of anyone in Kenya. We can visit Somalia or any other country like others. Treason? 
go ahead and charge them. In, if folks in Kenya are tired of Northeastern and its people, try us to Machoka being second class citizens. And uh, uh, former Deputy Speaker, I'm just wondering mm -hmm. how widespread is this view by members of uh, the communities in the Northeastern region? How, how, how much of representative you know, is it? You know, let me just tell you something. I want you to understand these things in a very basic format. And first of all, you must cleanse your mind from all Kenyans, I'm talking about the non-Somali Kenyans, from the fact that there are Kenyans who are Somalis. These are not people who came in like Indians and Europeans in here. Mm -hmm. These are people whose region was lumped as part of Kenya by the British. The same way the Luya are divided, the same mm -hmm. way the Turkana are divided, Masai. the same way the Luas are divided, Masai. the same way the Maasai are divided. So for the first time, it's important, including leaders. You know, I, I was in parliament, uh, in the seventh parliament, mm -hmm. and as, as a leader, an MP who I think has since deceased, uh, the late um, Kubo, Mcharo Kubo, uh, he oh, was, yeah. was, was a, a member of parliament. And he told me one day, but yeah, that was an education. It's a very well educated guy who got his degree in those early days. Mm -hmm. He said, but you have to be grateful to this country. You know, you're a refugee and we even made you a member of parliament. Really? You know? oh, really? <laughs> so the presumption that these people are coming from somewhere else mm -hmm. and that they don't have the same rights a Luo or a Kikuyu has is one thing people need to get their minds off. You, you get my point? To say them and us mm -hmm. as, as if there is a Somali, which is a different thing from the rest of the country. No. We might look different, and everybody looks different from the other. A law looks different from a Kamba and a Kikui and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Maybe the one thing you all share is that we, we, our hair is a bit softer than the rest of you, and that's why you, you talk of Nyele <laughs> Laini, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which is natural. I mean, there's nothing you can see do about it. We didn't choose to be that. You get my point? So what basically needs to be done is that is one point. Mm. Second thing is you have to understand that the Hati region has suffered oppression from independence, from pre-independence until today. The first freedom fighters were not Mamaos. The first freedom fighters were people from the region mm. whose history has never been. I'll show you the links which have now been declassified by the British. We fought the British and, and literally pushed them out of the region. In, in some cases, in, a, in the most bloody way. But nobody talks about that history. Because for a long time, there was, there was, there was the, the assumption that you, if you have a conflict somewhere, Right. Then it becomes easier. Listen to me carefully. Mm -hmm. If you have a conflict somewhere mm -hmm. with a section of the population and you say, these are the ones who are trying to fight us as Kenyans, mm -hmm. Shifta, Somalis, and the rest of it, it becomes easier for you to do a lot of other things. Steal the farms of the Europeans, do everything else, and take it while people are looking at this. Mm -hmm. Now, Al-Shabaab are in Somalia. It's an internal Somalia thing. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with us. But what did we do? We committed our forces unilaterally. Mm -hmm unilaterally to an independent sovereign state without seeking their permission for us to commit our forces there. Then we meddled in their own internal affairs by trying to prop up a warlord who is there using our forces. So one is that we do have, of course, a, a, a maritime dispute with Somalia, which is already in court. And if it's in court, every other avenue, avenue was done. Somalia is pushed very hard for Kenya to come to the table for this thing to be settled outside the court. In the previous administration before Farmajo, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud tried everything possible and he was literally ignored. And like, he doesn't matter. And, like, who are you? You are just some kind of piece of rubbish. Let me just finish this. Now, then they took the matter to court. Getting it out of court, they said, no, we don't want to get out of the court. Okay. The whole world is looking at it and saying, look, the court is a jurisdiction. Let's see how that court. But now, let us see. Th those are blocks. They're not being utilized. Somalis are not selling those blocks. They're not mm -hmm. doing anything. Kenya is not selling. Those blocks are waiting for the determination of the court. But we can keep our relationship going. Many countries have had similar situations like that. Now, that relationship also, as it is right now, we, we took the warlord soldiers through our camps, military camps with their trucks, with everything else, and took them to Mandera. When you say warlord soldiers, are you referring to Amisom? I'm talking about uh, the, the Ahmed Mandela, this, what do you call, uh, the, 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 the current uh, president, regional president of, uh, of, of, of uh, Jubaland. That's a tantamount 
to Somalia interfering in our region right now and propping up a governor in Western Kenya, for example, and seeing this governor. Honorable uh, Malim, you have raised uh, very yes. serious issues. And first of all, in 2011, when KDF went into Somalia, you were in parliament, right? Yes. Did you raise any questions uh, based on what the Kenyan government did going into Somalia? To be honest with you, I initially was very hesitant to involve our forces inside there, but I wanted us to create uh, support uh, forces from there, train them, use them to flush out Al-Shabaab. But at the same time, do that in conjunction with the Sante and Mogadishu. The Sante and Mogadishu was much weaker than what it is today. Mm -hmm. But when they were, we were moving in, that was done unilaterally. We didn't know about it. It's only the intelligence. And, 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 and let me just finish that. When we moved in, as is the tradition all over the world, when your soldiers are inside another country, whether it's the American soldiers that went into Iraq, whether they went into whatever it is, before they go into that country, there's always a certain section of the political class that opposes it. Mm -hmm. But once they go in there, you can only stand by your soldiers. Now that time I said, if you look at the Hansard, let us have, we have already entered the place, let's have an exist, exit, exit strategy, let us have an implementation strategy. Let's finish this job as soon as possible mm -hmm. and get out of that place as soon as possible. I, I mean, uh, so the idea was that we go in, we flush out the Al Shabaab. They were running helter skelter. If only we kept on chasing them, there would not be Al Shabaab in Jubaland today. But what we did is that we just went slowly. We went all the way to uh, Kismayu and we stayed put there. Honorable Malim. Um, Until today, 11 years later. Uh, very serious issues. I don't know. Like, it's like 11 years. It's nine years uh, later. Uh, yes. And I actually need us to move on. But before we do, so. Yes. Of course, let me make some comments because yeah, I was in parliament. Since yes, we're together in parliament. Since, yes. since 2011, it's now <coughs> nine years, and yes. of course, there has been progress made. Um, the Al Shabaab would appear to have been weakened. You still think that was the wrong move? There was no, there is zero progress made comparatively. Al Shabaab was much weaker when we went in the first time. As we progressively stayed, my friend, we are not doing any work there. When, have you seen us engaging Al Shabaab wow. every day? So, Ami Soms. <laughs> No, no, I, I'm talking about the, the sector, the, the, the sector two, mm. where the Kenyan forces are. You should be seeing every day that our helicopters are bashing them, our soldiers are chasing them, we are there running after them, we are killing so many of them. You don't see that. So from where you sit, what's the most strategic way for to bring back our troops back then? Because the, the debate around it is that even if we were to bring back our army some troops right now, it's too late or it's too early, it's too soon to bring them back. I think, we already went in. I think what we need to do is that always, uh, you know, one thing is that we've got to really take advantage of history and look at the jurisdictions. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Every time a, a country, a neighboring country, a frontline country committed its forces to that country, that problem eventually ended up in the country where those forces were, came from. That's why I'm, uh, where Kofi Annan was thoroughly opposed mm. to any of the frontline countries sending their forces in there. For your information, what you see right now in Ethiopia, the changes in Ethiopia, the, 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 the collapse of the TPLF right. was as a result of committing their forces into Somalia. All right. Um, and and, and what I'm, my position is that... Sorry to cut you short, Honorable Malim. I need to yeah. bring them in as you mm, exit this topic. Uh, Senator Linturi, yes. you wanted to say something. Yeah, this matter was brought to Parliament that time, and I think there was debate in Parliament on whether we should allow the Kenyan forces to go to Somalia or not, and I can confirm mm -hmm. that uh, the... The opinions were very varied yeah. in, in Parliament, and I, I personally, uh, though I didn't have, really have this history of Somalia, mm -hmm. I was of the view mm -hmm. that even if Somalia was to be assisted, mm -hmm. the person that was, or, or the, the, the leaders of the team assisting Somalia fighting Al Shabaab, should not have been Kenya. Should not have been Kenyan because we are just, we are just the neighbors, and in the event, uh, that uh, that uh, problems were to continue persisting in Somalia, mm -hmm. uh, in Somalia, and there was to be any kind of retaliation, the easiest target would have been Kenya or any other country that bounded Somalia. So, if the UN or any other mm -hmm. body was interesting to ensure that the Al Shabaab was flushed out of Somalia and there was to be peace in Somalia, then they should have brought people from outside where. Okay. In the event of retaliation mm. or fighting back, then mm -hmm. they will not have been not the easiest the target. So we have yeah. suffered this because I think we, I don't think we really thought about it very, uh, very yeah. well. Yeah. All right, Dr. Chris. Yeah, briefly. I, I think uh, our concern is very clear that uh, on a matter like Somalia, whatever happened, the president had to seek 
parliamentary concurrence. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy the two gentlemen were in parliament at that time. Mm -hmm. So parliament made a determination. And to me, I go as per what parliament decided. I can tell you, if our forces were not in Somalia, maybe it would have been worse. Mm -hmm. Because they thought, let's go and contain from the source. But what the parliament needs, we need a progress report. So that we are told what progress has been made, the opportunity costs incurred. Then parliament can be able to debate and see whether it is the right time for them to exit. Okay. We've not seen that report coming to Parliament. Mm -hmm. But we can't come here and say that it was wrong for KDF to go there. I think it was the right decision. And Parliament at that time made a determination. They went there. We do support. And uh, these oh. soldiers have helped us. You, 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 you don't, can imagine. You don't, you don't think that that action has um, perforated the borders I, 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 I don't of, think of the so. country? I, I, I don't think so. Because... Uh, from my own analysis, and I'm speaking because I served in the Committee of Defense and Foreign Relations. Okay. And there's some of the info I have that I cannot be able to say it here uh -huh. because that was some of the classified information. I strongly feel if our forces would have gone to uh, Somalia, mm -hmm. it would have been different. It would have been worse. So when do they but we need to know, come back home? No, we need to be given a progress report. The MFA and the responsible members, when it comes to the heads of the KDF, okay. they need to bring a progress report in Parliament. All right. Parliament can be able to debate and be able to determine whether they should exit or they continue. Unfortunately, thing is open-ended. I agree with my colleagues, but we mm -hmm. can't come here and say right. that it was wrong. It was a wrong decision. They okay. voted. Who's in those? They wrong. voted. They voted, and they went there. Maybe mm -hmm. it will be worse by now. So oh. Parliament needs to be given a progress <laughs> report so that we can be able to debate and see what exit strategy right. we're going to have so that they can withdraw. In twenty seconds, can, uh, can I can I clarify? In twenty something? seconds, yes. yes. Can I clarify something? We did not vote for Kenya to send its forces into Somalia. We sanctioned the unilateral decision by the government because our forces were already in there. Uh, Lin the Turi was there. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we say now that the forces are there. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, we had our different views, like he has told you. Lin Turi, actually, we all participated very well in that. Mm -hmm. now, those who are opposed to the idea of that unilateral decision, mm -hmm. which I think uh, some of us felt, no, no, well, now that our forces are there, we, should, we must support our forces. Okay. So the idea of that you know, going in was not from parliament. Parliament merely sanctioned what the government had done. Okay. But, but point of order, Mr. Speaker, no, yes. okay. yes. you know, yes. 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 when you say point of order, <laughs> yes. you're given preference. Yes. We need to exist. The constitution is clear. Yes. Uh, if our forces are going out, they must have concurrence of parliament. Uh -huh. But where there's an extraordinary issue, mm -hmm. The forces can go, but still the matter must come to Parliament. And right. Then Parliament happened. has very little that it can no, 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 do no, because no, already the, 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 the event has taken you place. You can determine otherwise. No, no, the no, fact no, no, that no. you give a concurrence, it let is still me, within the Constitution. Okay. Uh, Kimirini, Kimirini. Sorry, Kimirini. allow me not to allow you further um, contributions to this conversation. You need to take a short break, but before you do so, you take a look at some of the feedback <laughs> you've been sending to us. On Twitter, Engineer Lazaro, you're saying that how can such large numbers of legislators leave the country without the knowledge of all clearance from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Intelligence Service. Security labs, meaning coronavirus suspect can easily sneak in. Mm -hmm. All right, this is still on Twitter. Shema, you say that people can sneak out to another country and meet the president of that country under a diplomatic-like agenda, but without the knowledge of their home foreign affairs ministry appears interesting. Then on SMS line 22422, of course, you can uh, be sharing your